بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا بفضلك من فضلك علما وتعليما اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وصلي اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We're back for our second reading from Al-Adhkar, The Remembrances by Al-Imam Al-Nawawi, Rahimah Allah. And as we said in the first video, we are going to be reading just three or maybe four even, uh, depending on the chapter, a hadith, and offering some brief reflections for us to take and benefit from in these difficult times. So we're going to continue with the same chapter that we started off last time. Babu du'a il-karbi wa du'a'i inda al-umur al-muhimma. The chapter on the supplication of calamities and supplication for important matters that one is concerned with. So, uh, Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah continued, wa rawayna fi sahihay al-Bukhari wa Muslim an Anasin radiyallahu anhu qal, kana akthar du'a al-Nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana, وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ زَارَ مُسْلِمٌ فِي رِوَايَتِهِ قَالَ وَكَانَ أَنَسٌ إِذَا أَرَادَ أَنْ يَدْعُوَ بِدَعْوَةٍ دَعَا بِهَا فَإِذَا أَرَادَ أَنْ يَدْعُوَ بِدُعَاءٍ دَعَا بِهَا فِيهِ So he says that we narrate from Al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Anas رضي الله عنه that uh, the, the dua, the supplication that the Prophet wasallam used to say the most was, O oh Allah, give us in the world good and in the afterlife good and protect us from the punishment of the fire. And Muslim adds in his narration that when Anas wanted to make a single statement in supplication, he would say this statement. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. And whenever he wanted to uh, make dua that was more extended, a longer supplication, he would include this statement in the context of a larger dua. And of course, this is uh, a dua that is mentioned in the Quran. So it's very valuable, a uh, very valuable, excuse me. Um, one of the things that we learn from the sunnah of making dua is that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would always use general terms and general phrases in order to generalize the good, right? Get all that you can in the dua, right? So anything that's considered good in the dunya, that's what we're asking for. And the same thing in the Akhirah. As well as generalizing the terms in which one speaks about bad things. All right. So everything that's undesirable, anything that could bother you, upset you, frustrate you, disappoint you, it's all encompassing. And that's the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he would invoke Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In the next hadith, وَرَوَيْنَا فِي سُنَنَ النَّسَاءِ وَكِتَابِ بْنِ السُنَّيِ عَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنِ جَعْفَرِ عَنْ عَلِيٍّ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ قَالْ لَقَّنَنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ هَأُولَاءِ الْكَلِمَاتِ وَأَمَرَنِي إِنْ نَزَلَ بِي كَرْبٌ أَوْ شِدَّةٌ أَوْ أَنْ أَقُولَهَا وَأَمَرَنِي إِنْ نَزَلَ بِي كَرْبٌ أَوْ شِدَّةٌ أَنْ أَقُولَهَا لَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ الْكَرِيمُ الْعَظِيمُ 
سبحانه تبارك الله رب العرش العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وكان عبد الله بن جعفر يلقنها وينفث بها على الموعوك ويعلمها المغتربة من بناته So in the next hadith, Imam al-Nawawi narrates from the sunan of the great hadith scholar and Imam al-Nasai, who has uh, a collection in what's regarded as one of the six canonical or authentic collections, al-Nasai, again. And from a book by, a book of hadith, a collection of hadith by Ibn al-Sunni, rahimahumullah. And this is from the authority of Abdullah ibn Ja'far. On the authority of Ali, radiallahu anhum, that he said, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he uh, gave these words to me, and this is a loose translation. He gave these words to me, or taught me to recite these words, and he commanded me that whenever there was some type of calamity that descended upon me, or any type of uh, extremely difficult situation that I say them. And that uh, dua is, there is no God but Allah, the generous and the mighty. Glory to him. Blessed is Allah, Lord of the mighty, magnificent throne. All praise is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. La ilaha illallah al-kareem al-azim Subhanahu tabarak allahu rabbul arsh al-azim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen And then uh, it's also within this uh, the context of this narration that Abdullah ibn, ja uh, uh, ibn Ja'far who's uh, giving us the hadith from Ali he used to teach these words and say them, uh, recite them over people that were sick with fever, suffering from fever. And he would also teach these words to uh, his daughters that were not married to uh, relatives, meaning to one of their cousins or somebody within their clan or tribe, all right? He would teach those words to his daughters. And in the last hadith that we'll read, وَرَوَيْنَا فِي سُنَنِ أَبِي دَاوُودِ عن أبي بكرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال دعوات المكروب اللهم رحمتك أرجو فلا تكرني إلى نفسي طرفة عين وأصلح لي شأني كله لا إله إلا أنت so this is uh, related by Imam al-Nawawi from the Sunan of Abu Dawood, rahimahullah, on the authority of Abu Bakra, radiallahu anhu. He says that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that the invocations, the supplications of someone who has suffered from a calamity are, or I should say is, O oh Allah, your mercy I hope for. So do not leave me to myself or to my own devices for the blink of an eye. And rectify me or rectify for me all of my affairs. There is no God but you. Allahumma rahmataka arju fala takirni ila nafsi tarfata ain wa aslih li shani kullahu la ilaha illa ant. So once again, O oh Allah, your mercy I hope for. So do not leave me to myself, meaning my own devices, for the blink of an eye and rectify. All of my affairs, there is no God but you. So again, in calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are 
uh, admitting and recognizing our ubudiyah, our state of being the slaves of Allah and our total dependence on Him. And one of the benefits of dua is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first He promises to answer dua, promises to answer dua, always when we call upon Him, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased when the slave calls out to Him. So that last dua is particularly beautiful because in it is, you know, an explicit recognition. We don't want to be left to our own devices at any time, not for the blink of an eye. So we're constantly aware of our dependence, excuse me, our dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he is the one who is truly our protector and our provider and our sustainer at every moment whether we are uh, awake or asleep or any state in between. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq and taysir. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum.